India's power crisis is characterized by idling capacity on the one hand and unmet power demand on the other. By one government estimate, 34 coal-fired power plants, or just over 40,000 megawatts of capacity, are under stress. And this puts at risk 1.8 lakh crore in bank debt. Other private sector estimates, such as that of Bank of America Maryland, suggest the problem could be twice as large as that. The government is seeking to resolve this in a multi-pronged fashion, from creating a power bad bank, or ARC, to auctioning power purchase agreements. All of these solutions are on the table. But how are they progressing? Joining us to talk about that this morning, Power Secretary Ajay Kumar Bhalla, Vinayak Chatterjee, Chairman at Feedback Infrastructure, and Ashok Khurana, Director General at the Association of Power Producers, Gentlemen, to all three of you, a warm welcome to Bloomberg Quaint. Uh, Mr. Kurana, Vinayak, I'm going to come to you in just a bit. I'm going to ask for your patience because I have a bunch of questions I want to put to the Power Secretary first to try and understand how close we are to any kind of real solution. And then I'll come to you for your feedback. Mr. Bhalla, let me first start by asking you about the variety of solutions that the government is working on, one of which seems to have become a reality, which is the auction of the power purchase agreements. I understand about 2,500 uh, megawatt of PP. PAs uh, was put on auction, you receive bids for about 2,200 and there is the possibility or the capacity of being able to put 5,000 megawatts of PPA on auction as well, but nobody's clear whether there will be enough bids for that or not. Can you talk us through that solution and how real that is? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, this was an effort which we started last year that uh, if, as long-term PPAs are not coming through, can we design a model where, which is little more favorable to the distribution companies? And uh, we tried a pilot of 2,500 megawatt. Of course, Discom showed a lot of interest, so we have a uh, little bigger demand than uh, 2,500. But in the first round, offers only for 2,200 megawatt have come, basically from the people who would be having some sure coal linkage available to them, and uh, some capacities which are not linked with PPAs. So, I mean, as it is a pilot, we expect it to go through quickly and uh, there is definitely demand from the state governments in the medium time frame. Uh, and uh, they would not like additional liabilities to be created in the terms of fixed cost and all. So we designed a model which may not be very much favorable to the generators, but I am calling it as a beginning. If it succeeds, then we'll modify the model, make it more balanced and then come out with more such bids in the days to come. All right, could you take us through more such bids? Because I understand for this first pilot, the price bids are to be opened on the 6th of July, which is at the end of this week. Uh, so do you have more auctions already in the pipeline? Because as I read somewhere that there is about 5,000 megawatts of PPA demand, as you put it, from the discoms. Yeah, yeah, we would do that. I mean, we haven't, uh, see the demand from discoms is there. And after success of this round, we will uh, we'll have to modify the uh, uh, bidding system a little bit. As I said, it is a little more uh, uh, in favor of discounts than uh, generators. So we'll have to balance it out and uh, do a regular kind of thing. This was a pilot. So we'll uh, assess the further demand. And as, uh, as you rightly said, we have more demand today than uh, um, uh, the bids we have got. But why we have not got more bids, we'll, I mean, uh, many generators have raised the issues with us. And the process has started. So we have gone ahead with the existing system, and we will uh, uh, modify it and then make it as a regular system. As a, if this is a pilot we are doing. So can you can you give me specific details on what modifications you're expecting? Because those power companies or power projects that did not have a proper coal supply yeah. agreement, or those that were uh, you know admitted to the NCLT were not permitted to participate, which is why I believe that we didn't have as much uh, participation as expected. Uh, how are you hoping to fix that? And when will the next auction happen? Are there any concrete plans in place already? I, I mean, there's no concrete plan on the table as such, but as I said, after success of this model and issues raised by certain generators, uh, we need to uh, modify the uh, uh, methodology a little bit. And then we, bring, like, like there is no escalation of uh, link to on the coal because it's a three years agreement. But generators have mentioned that the coal, coal prices will escalate. So you must uh, add, uh, give that kind of pass through and all. So we'll improve upon the system I mean, as, uh, after this round and come out as quickly as possible. Definitely the demand is there. So on that side, I'm not worried, but uh, we'll have further discussions with the Association of Power Producers and all and modify the methodology a bit 
and then come out with a more balanced manner. Okay, so this deals with a very small part of the problem. This uh, pilot auction, as you spoke of, and any subsequent auctions uh, deal right. with 2,500, 5,000 megawatts, whereas the capacity that seems to be under stress, depending on which estimate you believe, could be anywhere between 40,000 megawatts to 80,000 megawatts. Now, the government seems to have floated a few other ideas as well. Something called the Samadhan scheme, the Parivartan scheme, which is REC-led, and the last I read, there was an India ratings report Report which suggested that the government's also discussing the possibility of creating a national distribution company. Of all of these, can you tell me which one is likely to be a reality and what the potential architecture of that scheme could be at this point in time? See, the Parivartan scheme has been brought out by SBI and they have a single robot N11 assets, which are operational assets where uh, with a little bit of restructuring the assets will turn around and uh, we i mean they have already gone for the uh, assessment of the sustainable debt and once that uh, ratings are available then these assets can be put on auction and uh, with a restructured debt and if as i said these are operational assets with the ppas and all there are certain other problems which can be solved with the debt restructuring so uh, we expect that a set of assets which are operational can be resolved by Samadhan scheme. Now, Parivartan scheme is a basically an asset management company which REC has suggested and we have been uh, discussing this uh, model with the Ministry of Finance. Uh, it basically uh, says that house the assets for some time till the further demand comes and pick uh, this thing. So, assets which do not have PPAs as of now and are stressed can wait for some time and uh, wait for the demand to pick up and then those can be turned around and sold in the market. So that's a scheme on which REC has made certain suggestions. We have been discussing with finance and we expect that once the, some issues get resolved because setting up of this type of asset uh, company uh, needs certain relaxation from the RBI. So once uh, the model is acceptable to all lenders, we will, uh, our REC would be moving that and seeking the relaxation. So once that happens, then some of the assets which are the neg um, other than ones which can be solved with Samadhan could be moving into this uh, basket. Uh, what is the timeline, sir, for any of these schemes to become operational? Whether it's Samadhan, where you hope to put up, you know, let's say equity for these projects uh, for auction, and from what I understand, you're talking about about 11 power projects of about 12,000 megawatts each, or Parivartan, which is 25,000 megawatts of stress capacity that will be transferred to an AMC or ARC, however you term it. What is the real timeline for any of these to become operational? Three months, six months, nine months? It has to be done within the present timelines of RBI circular of February uh, 2018. And uh, in case, I mean, uh, assets, there is visibility of resolving this asset, then uh, matter can be raised with RBI for any uh, relaxation required. But as of now, both the sides expect, I mean, uh, Samadhan scheme already, as I said, that they have gone into uh, assessment of the sustainable debt. So that should be, I mean, already available with the bank, uh, lead bankers and uh, then they have to take a call that how they will dispose these assets uh, with the revised uh, debt uh, as per the sustainability structuring. Uh, the other one, of course, uh, REC would be discussing with the lenders in Mumbai and discussing with RBI also and there, thereafter only it will move further for what time frame it can be resolved in. As I said, it needs certain relaxation from RBI for setting up of that kind of company where assets presently are proposed to be housed on the uh, book value. Uh, what kind of relaxations are you seeking from RBI, sir? Because uh, RBI so far has not been willing to offer any relaxations setting, to its Feb 12 circular or the 180-day timeline in any fashion. But, I mean, these matters are under discussion that uh, with RBI also what kind of relaxations. I mean, if, if RBI relaxes, then some of these assets can be resolved. Otherwise, within the time frame available uh, as per RBI circular, whatever can be resolved should be resolved.
Okay, one quick more question before I also go to the other guests. There is talk of a national distribution company that the government is considering in order to do what the state discoms are not able to do, given their level of indebtedness or their level of losses. Uh, that, you know, you want to create a national distribution company. This is something I read in an India ratings report, and I want to confirm if this is the thought process within the central government. Well, suggestions have come from various stakeholders for uh, forming a company like that. Um, but it needs to be further discussed what could be the outline of this company under the Electricity Act, how would it function as a distribution company. Presently, we have two PSUs which are basically doing distribution uh, strengthening and funding, REC and PFC. And uh, most of the government schemes are also being rooted through these companies and the government schemes like Uday have been implemented with their assistance to strengthen, to build capacity and to sustain uh, the discounts which are not performing up to the mark. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the suggestions are from, as I said, from different stakeholders have come, which are under examination of the government. But if you were to build this out, what would it involve? Do you have any kind of even preliminary architecture in mind for a national distribution company? We, we, no. Okay. No, we are not, uh, at this stage, I'm not able to say what kind of uh, infrastructure or um, outline it would have. All right. Mr. Bala, stay with us. I'm going to take some of these things that you've said to our panelists. Uh, Vinayak, you've heard or you already know of the various solutions that are being worked on, the timelines within which they're being worked on. You know, my question to you is this. Do they fix the underlying problems which range from, you know, from the lack of coal or the inability to be able to, you know, sort of resource coal in, in the right fashion or the lack of PPAs or the falling price of power uh, to the timelines that will start kicking in thanks to RBI's circular? Do you believe these fix the problems or only fix the symptoms? Okay, I'm going to step back a little and say, make two points. One, it is for more than five years, half a decade, that I have been saying in my discussions with people like you on channels, in writing articles for the financial press, that it is the distribution sector. The distribution sector is the tail that wags the power sector dog. And it is the travails of the distribution sector, if removed, can see this stressed assets, the generation side buzzing again. So the problem is not of some scheme X or scheme Y or scheme Z that will affect some 2,500 megawatts or 5,000 megawatts of generating capacity or discussion with RBI. The time for that is over. We had the last five years to do all of that, but the problem is not today's. The size of the problem, as you yourself said, is humongous. Depending on which estimate you take, it is 30,000 megawatts to 70,000 megawatts of stressed generating capacity in a, in a situation of extreme, it's an extremely paradoxical situation that here you have a country which is crying out for power. The last statistic that I know is that the average power cut in urban India on the Urja website is seven hours. More to, uh, seven hours, some X minutes, some seven minutes more than last year. So power cuts have increased in urban India and for rural India, it is anybody's guess how many hours they are. So you've got a sector that is crying out for energy and you've got capacity that is unable to sell the power. What is the problem? The problem is the distribution sector. And with this size of the problem, tinkering around with uh, experiments and uh, what shall I say, you know, pilots of 2,500 megawatts, the time for that is over. I am one of those, as mentioned, I am one of those stakeholders who for a long time have been advocating a national power distribution company as the real sledgehammer that is required to hit this sector and revive it. The transformation of discoms, the tinkering around with stressed assets is a medium term phenomenon. The country cannot wait. I, have, I strongly advocate uh, that the government immediately set up an architecture for a national power distribution company. It is the only sector where the state, where the central government is not present. It is present in fuels, it's present in generation, it's present in transmission. It is surprising that with all the stress in the distribution sector, the central government is still take, making up its mind as to what impact it can have on the distribution sector. I strongly advocate a national power distribution company, which after all the state discoms are done with their PPAs, all the balanced surplus capacity can be picked up. The question is where can you sell it? Do whatever is required in the Electricity Act to solve the problem, send it to all the utilities which are owned by the central government, starting with railways, moving on to PSUs like sail and various others, 
uh, army ports the central government has a huge number of establishments where it is the uh, where itself it is the purchaser of power so i'm going to stop here to say now summary it is the distribution sector that is a problem we cannot wait to for again for the medium and long term for this sector to turn around and start demanding power the situation requires urgent action okay. the the pro the size of the problem is humongous and it requires a matching solution the matching solution is a national power distribution company that immediately picks up the balanced power generating capacity available with power plants over and above the PPS sign with the state discounts. But may I stop here now? All right, Vinayak, let me just quickly put one follow-up question to you, uh, you know, to that. The point well taken that we need to fix distribution before anything else. The fact that, you know, we live in this irony of not having enough power for consumers and yet having power plants, plants go to waste uh, is well taken as well. Uh, I have two parts to my next follow-up question. One is that it will take time for a national power distribution uh, company need to be put together as mr bhalla has pointed out it might require uh, you know some walk through legislation etc etc uh, in the interim we are going to see the rbi circular uh, timeline kick in for stressed power assets uh, which is already kicked in if i may say so and so therefore there needs to be some resolution there so we are looking at the potential use of a bad bank or an arc as one puts it or uh, the samadhan scheme which requires the auction of power projects so can you just give me a quick response on whether you think of these two, which will be more effective? Because I think I've seen some commentary that you've made. Uh, I've also read a B Bank of America Maryland report, which suggests that maybe a bad bank is a better way to go than uh, the NCLT or the IBC route that comes under the RBI circular. Uh, to be honest with you, it is not either or. Okay. I think solutions have to be case specific. There are, some, there are some stressed assets for whom a restructuring of the loan is an ideal solution because it gives breathing time for the, the same group of promoters at that plant to actually get back into the production cycle and, and move away from being an NPA. There are other plants which will necessarily have to go to the uh, tribunal, to the NCLT. So I would pick the plant by plant, and there are not so many of them, there would be, as it said, anywhere between 11 to 30 plants. You can sit across the table, come to a decision, and I think the banks, the Ministry of Power, Ministry of Finance, and RBI should sit together in a closed room and not leave that room till you have sorted out this solution case by case for each power plant. Okay, fair Horses enough. for courses. Okay, my sec the second part of my follow up question was this. Mr. Balla has said that they are considering a national di distribution company of sorts, but the architecture of that is not yet clear. What do you think should be the architecture of that for it to be a success? Also, if you can explain really what is this national distribution company going to do? It's going to take surplus power from generators and sell it to PS, central PSUs, etc. Because eventually, how do you ignore the last mile linkage, which is the state discord? of sorts. Is this question addressed to me? Yeah, that's to you, Vinayak. Well, I think this idea is, is gaining traction. It has taken some time for the idea to sink in. Two, three years. I have myself had the opportunity to present the idea to the Prime Minister, to various senior members of the Cabinet, to various others, to journalists, to TV channels. The idea is gaining traction. I am not the one to finally say what the architecture is, but the Central Electricity Act does provide for central intervention across all lengths of the power chain. If you recall, I mean, people who study economic history in power will recall that when NTPC was set up, the states had protested, saying generation is a state, electricity is a state subject, we have state-owned power plants, why is the center setting up NTPC? But the center has very clearly taken a major position in fuels, coal, gas, oil, they're all under central government uh, overarching regulation and ownership and dis dispensation, generation, everybody knows, transmission, everybody knows. On distribution, why do we put up our hands and say, oh, it's a very complex situation? It isn't. You can cut through the complexity with a knife, through, like through butter. Sit around the table, see what elements of the Electricity Act enable you to do so. But this government has shown boldness in many, many big schemes, whether it is GST or demonetization, etc. Surely the, uh, the, uh, the ability to set up a national power distribution company falls in that same league of boldness in a situation that demands very, very serious uh, attention. So it is, uh, we are not fighting against the state the discoms. Let them buy all the power they want to. After that, there is still unutilized capacity because PLF is at 60%. So there is 25 to 30% available power in PLF terms. 
Since nobody wants that power, why should you object if the central government buys it under a new dispensation called the National Power Distribution Company? After it buys the power, whom does it sell it to? After all, the railways are a deemed licensee. It can sell it to the railways, which is the largest uh, consumer of electricity in the country that is owned by the central government, etc., etc., etc. So what great complexity is there in the architecture if the decision and the will to move forward is there? And that is what I'm advocating. Okay, let me put that question to Mr. Bhalla. Mr. Bhalla, why is it taking time then uh, to be able to resolve or come upon a lasting solution? Is it your fear that if you take the pressure of state discoms to reform, that they never will? Because even the Uday scheme has been met with marginal success. Great scheme, bold vision, but marginal success so far by all measure. I won't say it is marginal success. It has not reached the ultimate uh, figures which we had anticipated. This is the last year of uh, this thing we expected. I mean, losses, uh, average ATNC losses have come down, but then some of the states need to do better than others, and they are still at uh, figures much higher than uh, I mean, what average is expected. Even the ACS ARR gaps have come down, and if we total up the overall losses from their profit and loss accounts, even that has reduced very remarkably. There's a culture of setting up tariff has uh, come in. Every year, people go to the regulator, get the tariff set in. We are pushing all those kind of reforms. Now, if you take away the better customers or the best paying customers out of discoms, then indirectly we will be shutting down the discoms. Then national distribution companies should take over the whole country, which I don't know whether would be a practical issue or not. But if you keep on picking the best customers out of existing distribution network, then we are indirectly uh, damaging the discoms. So, I mean, why not look at improvements of the system at the discoms itself? And yes, national discom can come and assist these discoms in wherever required in uh, uh, building infrastructure, in distribution, in, in capacity building. And yes, possibility what Mr. Vinayak Chatterjee is suggesting in some of the customers like railways. Now, railways to overall demand may not be that high in terms of percentage of 171 gigawatt of uh, peak demand we talk about. It's a, it's a minuscule demand vis-a-vis -vis this. So we, we must uh, look at a very comprehensive kind of solution. Uh, one single step of this nature might dislocate the present system and is not uh, 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 bring in reforms. We definitely, the idea of uh, separation of carriage and content came in the draft bill, which was introduced in the parliament. That is one solution which can looked at uh, by the state governments, and uh, I mean we can separate the, the generation and transmission got separated from the distribution in power sector. Now supply chain all supply also should be separated from the wire. I mean that those kind of steps can also be taken, which are already available. I mean I mean envisaged in the Mr. planning. Mr. Forgive me for but yes, I mean you. national discom can be done. You. I mean I, I am not opposed forgive to that idea. Forgive me for idea. interrupting you, but my point is this: there is no time left, right? The 180-day timeline kicks in. Now, the point is that you know, we, can, we can keep discussing and deliberating this, as Vinayak pointed out, but effectively, if we are going to be faced with very large haircuts on behalf of the banks or very delayed outcomes, if all of this has to be moved to an ARC, then investors have to be found and there is no line outside anybody's door of investors, then what are we talking about? We're talking about further crippling the power sector than where it is right now. So my question to you is simple. Is the government going to take any time-bound decision between now and the next three months to be able to resolve this, whether it's the distribution company and plus the ARC and plus the auction of whatever viable projects? Is that all going to happen in the next three months? See, see I tell you overall, it's not that government, uh, government has taken various steps. Last, it's, I mean, 40,000 is only the coal-based plants we are looking at. There's another 20,000 odd capacity of gas plants. Government subsidized the gas for two years and uh, uh, tried to revive these plants. But not today when we have more coal capacity, if I subsidize this side, then I push out some more capacity. So it's basically, a, I mean, uh, do we envisage any, any enhanced demand of uh, 40,000 or 60,000 megawatt in the next 180 days, it may not be possible to have that kind of demand. And yes, we may not have the infrastructure at the lowest level to distribute that kind of power. We are building up uh, infrastructure under the India Lupadia Gram Jyoti Yojana or under the transmission schemes, which uh, intrastate we have sanctioned for the northeastern states where the infrastructure is weak. Uh, to um, increase the demand to reach the electricity in a much more comprehensive manner and with better quality. But, but sir, all these things take time. I, mean, I don't expect 80,000 megawatts sudden demand, whether through a national distribution company or anybody. 
Why These timelines, as I said, if you can solve some of the assets and resolve with the restructuring, those are the assets which we should uh, look at immediately and try to do it. That's what government is doing. Yeah, okay. Let me go to Mr. Khurana, uh, you know, the most important stakeholder here, the power Let companies me say, themselves. Among these 34 assets, uh, let me go to Mr. Kurana, the most important can stakeholder. I, can I here. add a line here? Among yeah. the many sure, of these... Ahead, Mr. Bhala. No, let, let, let me add one. May. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Hello. Yes, Mr. Bhala, please go ahead. No, I mean, out of these 34 assets, there are some assets... The, out of these 34 assets, we have tried to resolve 7, 8 already. There are some assets which there is hardly any construction taken uh, or made on the ground. I mean, those are the assets in numbers or megawatts or it is visible, but there is nothing which can be done to these assets in a shorter or a even medium time frame. This requires a lot of investment further to build these assets. At times, only a boiler construction has started, nothing else has come up. I mean, uh, those capacities are also counted. Those are also part of these 40,000 megawatts. So let's be fair to this thing. One has to see in field. That's what SBI is doing. Look at the, the sustainability part of it, where the asset is standing today, and try to resolve accordingly. Mr. Vinayak Chatterjee very right, rightly said, each asset needs to be resolved in an independent, different manner. There is no single solution for all the assets as one go. Each asset needs a different kind okay. of treatment. And uh, that is what these lenders are working together with full support of power ministry and finance ministry. All right, fair enough. Mr. Kurana, uh, time is running out. That's the only point I can put to you. Several good solutions may be on the table, but they're nowhere near fruition. Uh, you know, in the interim, what is going to happen to your power companies? Uh, are we looking at substantial haircuts? And who's to blame? Is it the cancellation of coal licenses or is it the power industry that was very ambitious in building up capacity itself? See, let's not know in the blame game and who is responsible. Let's talk of future. First, let me comment on a national distribution company. My idea is that idea is, has been on the table for the last two years, and we'll need a lot of discussion and fleshing out to actually implement that idea. If I take Vinayak idea, you're only substituting power, and as Mr. Bhalla rightly said, we'll only put this comps more in distress. The DISCOM issue has been with us for the last about three to four decades now. We, and I fully agree with Vinayak, that's the main issue. But that would need handling and long-term solution. Immediate problem is how to save these assets going to NCLT. Now let me put the problem. In addition to the project which has gone to NCLT, we have about 50 gigawatt of stress projects. Now if I categorize them, easiest to be cured, the first step is those who are suffering from huge under-recoveries. And Mr. Bhalla is aware of it, and we have discussed that. You know, there are three main factors. That is the change in law, receivables, and the faulty coal index. Now, these all three combined today have impacted the cash flow of about 23,000 crores to these 12 gigawatt projects. Now, there's a first thing which can actually be done among the policy makers and the regulator in flat seven to eight days if they want to do it. And to ensure that money flows to these projects. Now, it's really a very irony that I have defaulted to the bank because government owes me money. Who is the defaulter? The government or the developer? These 12 gigawatts are asking for money for the power they have supplied. And they cannot get working capital. They arrange their own money. We buy the coal in advance, pay for railway in advance, and supply Mr. power, Kurana, and point then don't well get taken. money. Point well taken. If the government the should be able law. to pay up its dues so that these 12 gigawatt worth projects are able to service their de debt. What about the other solutions? Which ones do you think are most ideal if you think a national distribution company is not the answer? Now, let me come on. Let's come to Samadhan scheme of uh, SBI. Question is, if a project today has no PPA or no coal, it, there is no sustainable debt over there. Now, if you are talking of sustainable debt, that means they have partial PPAs. If you can restructure those loans, those loans will start paying, and the small portion, let's give you an example. For a 1,000 megawatt project, if you have 800 megawatt of PPA, the 200 capacity is stressed. 
डिमांड of all the discoms and putting in the bids this bid came without the coal now there is a clear cut provision in shakti which provides for giving coal linkage to an aggregator my suggestion to is next bid should come with coal so that those projects can also bid this will widen the participation and get the bids my idea is we need to find solution by which these projects the same owners can easily operate with no roe no principal payment only on the interest country gains because you will get power at 2.84 but mr kurana you know are you saying there will be ppa options for 15 to 17 gigawatts swapping. listen to me please now sir are you saying there will be ppa options for 15 to 17 no. gigawatts listen, no please. sir some amount of that is going to have to get resolved through some kind I'm of not, stress process I'm not, right No, no. Please listen to me. There is one more scheme which Mr. Bhalla has not spoken, which is coal swapping scheme. They have already come up with a bid of thousand megawatt over there. Now we have sixty gigawatt of projects, which have variable cost running beyond three point two five, three point four zero, because they are very old project and their their conversion rate is very high. Now there is a scheme by which. this coal and the ppa both are swapped and given to new plants which are more efficient unfortunately that scheme has not gained traction that scheme needs to be taken advantage of because it is a win win situation for stress projects and for the discoms they get cheap power stress projects that the coal and the ppa if we actually implement these two schemes is a coal swapping but we need to really a lot of advocacy with states with the resistance on their mind to close their plants punjab closed this plant for 6 month and the private sector got the ppa my question is all these two issues of ppa coal and the receivables are can be solved within the given timelines provided all stakeholders work together on this all right and mr this Kunan. actually will remove 32 gigawatts from stress assets All right, thirty-two gigawatts. Then issue comes up as a set of gas-based project and the projects. Yeah. So I'm so I'm sorry to keep interrupting you. It's only in the interest of time that I'm doing so. I only have a minute or two left, so I do want to get a very quick word in from Vinayak on whether he's hearing anything right now that suggests that we will have a solution by the time the RBI timeline runs out, or we are going to see a large-scale movement of power projects to the NCLT. Vinayak. Look. what i'm seeing is the current dialogue is addressing the problem in bits and pieces uh it it's uh, the the current nature of the dialogue still does not have the power and potential of addressing the entire sectoral issue of stressed power plants across all sources of fuel in the power sector and therefore i i i hope that a much bigger sharper Uh, and more impactful solution will be found and as i said uh, i seem to be sounding like a stuck record but i think the pushing a national power distribution company is the big solution 
All right, Mr. Bala, I'll give you the last word on this discussion since you patiently waited to hear from the other stakeholders. I come back to the very same question I've asked. We don't have time, it's yeah. running out. Can you give us any timeline within which this will get resolved? See, all these issues which Mr. Kurana raised, we have been addressing these issues. We have been taking up with regulator and regulator. CRC has come out with uh, many uh, orders already on the freight side and other charges and all have been made. Coal index also they are working on. We are trying to push the things faster so that these payment, uh, issues of uh, payment from DISCOM also gets resolved quickly. We have been taking up with the state governments and all. Now, these are the solutions. Mr. Kurana rightly said the tolling policy is the other solution which we did. And uh, many states, uh, when we called and discussed with them, it is a win-win for all because they get cheaper power. They don't have to move coal. Transportation of coal uh, pressure on the system is saved. So, uh, when uh, we had, uh, when rightly so, we brought the uh, states on table. Where there were certain difficulties in the scheme. We made some relaxations already done. And we expect this also to happen and some of these plants get quick orders on this front. We'll aggregate as suggested by Mr. Kurana as the next round. I didn't say that because that was a pilot earlier. We have learned about the shortcomings. So we'll improve upon that. And let's see how quickly Samadhan and the Parivartan lenders come together and try to work out a solution. It needs, I mean, there are sectoral issues, there are regulatory issues, and then there are definitely the lenders' issues which need to be resolved. RBI perhaps can intervene in the lenders' issues and give some time, but other issues we'll have to work, uh, work on, and we are working at it, and we will try to resolve as quickly as possible. We, if possible, will try to resolve as many assets as possible within the timeline of RBI circular. Or we have been requesting in any case the whole matter of RBI circular is under review in the Department of Financial Services. A hearing has been done with all the stakeholders. So we are also awaiting for the report from the uh, Secretary Department of Financial Services and, and then uh, look forward to whether we'll get some more time or not. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, we're going to leave it there. Uh, you know, te television discussions don't necessarily throw up solutions, but it doesn't look like we've come closer to any comprehensive solution as yet while time is running out. Mr. Palla, Vinayak, and Mr. Kurana, thank you very much for joining us here on Bloomberg Quint.